Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from US Imaging, and today we continue talking about data flow analysis. This time, though, we will look into a data flow analysis called Very Busy Expressions. To motivate its usage, I would like to show you this program. Can you think about ways to optimize it? Let me help you. Consider the expression A times B. This expression is looping variant. I mean, it does not really change inside the loop. So what could we do with it? We could try to move it outside the loop. For instance, we could place it right in the beginning of the loop. But to do it, which kind of information do we need? When is this kind of code transformation safe? Well, uh, we need to know if the expression a times b will be computed at the beginning of the loop, no matter which path the program takes. Notice that this is the case in this program. However, would it be true if we did not have this statement at the end of, of this program right here? Repeating the question, if we did not have this output statement, would a times b be computed at the beginning of the loop? regardless of the path taken by the program? Anyways, before we answer that question, now that we know that a times b is invariant, how could we improve this code? You can see the modified program on the right, the optimized program. As you see, we are placing the computation of a times b in a temporary location. It's called t, this location. Then we use t after that point where a times b is computed. But let me ask you something. Is there any disadvantage on this kind of optimization? Well, that's not really the point of this class. But notice that this optimization might increase register pressure. Register pressure is the maximum number of variables alive at the same program point. That's not the case in this example. I mean, our transformation, it doesn't really increase register suppression, but it could happen. So optimizations are usually not fail-proof, something that sometimes they can hurt performance too. Anyways, this expression A times B is very busy right before the loop. Indeed, we say that an expression is very busy at a program point if it will be computed no matter which path we take after that program point. Can you tell me which expressions are very busy in this program? Just as an exercise. You can stop the video and try to pinpoint very busy expressions. Here they are. The expressions in gray boxes are very busy at the program point where the gray box is located. As you see, A times B is very busy right before the loop. But can you figure out why A times B is not very busy at this point right here? And can you try to figure out how information appears in this analysis? I mean, if I have the use of an expression, call it A plus B in the example, what do I learn about very busy expressions? Basically, I know that A plus B is very busy right before that instruction. That is so because no matter what, we will reach the instruction where A plus B is computed because we are right before the instruction. So we know that an expression is very busy right before instruction if that expression is computed, I mean, use it at that instruction. But information also propagates as in the previous data flow analysis. So if an expression is very busy after an instruction and it's not updated by that instruction, then it's also very busy before the instruction. So information propagates backwardly in this analysis. Now, what do we do about instructions with multiple successors? Or in other words, how do we join data flow information here I have a picture to help you out to understand the setup. Which expressions are very busy immediately after program point P? 
Would you like to think about problem? If you want, you can stop the video and try to figure out what are the expressions very busy immediately after P. In this case, we need to compute the intersection of the sets of very busy expressions that come from the successors. This is a bit like what we did with available expressions. And just like in the case of available expressions, we use in and out tables to store the data flow facts that we learn with this analysis. In sets are the expressions very busy before instruction, and out sets are the very busy expressions after the instruction. As an example, here you have the set of very busy expressions before and after some instructions of a simple program. If you want, you can take a look into this program to try to figure out why some expressions are very busy or why they are not. And once you do it, can you try to come up with equations that denote the set of very busy expressions? Here they are, the equations. Again, they look very similar to the equations that we had seen before when talking about Leibniz analysis or available expression analysis. If you remember, it suffices that an expression is used at an instruction to be very busy before that instruction. And all the expressions that use the variable v defined by the instruction are removed from the inset related to that instruction. So definitions, they kill very busy expressions. And we use intersection to join information that comes from multiple successors. If you want, you can try to compute the in and out sets for our example program. I'm copying the equations here in case you want to do this example as an exercise. I'm providing you with the answers. We had seen that before. You can see the set of very busy expressions on the right. It's always safe, I mean performance safe, to move the computation of an expression to a point where that expression is very busy. When I say that something is performance safe, in this example, in the context of this class, I mean to say that we are not introducing in the program potentially redundant computations. But if A times B were not computed at the end of the program, performing the optimization, I mean moving the expression before the loop, would it still be performance safe? You can think about this question and if you get stuck, just post it on the comment section on the video and I will answer it there. And this last example closes our presentation of very busy expressions. In the next class, we will look into still another example of a data flow analysis. That will be the so-called reaching definition analysis. And that will be the last example of a data flow analysis that we shall see in this part of the course.